Hello all, in today's Stats and Methods short, we're going to talk about analysis of variance. And remember, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe so you can be notified of all future Stats and Methods shorts. Analysis of variance, or ANOVA for short, is a technique we use to test any linear regression model of interest. At its most basic level, ANOVA compares the variance explained by our model of interest to the variance due to error. If the ratio of these two values is close to 1, and we can say that our predictors do not significantly predict our outcome of interest. When the ratio is much higher than 1, it means that there is a lot more variance explained by our model than can be explained by the variability inherent in data collection. In psychology research, ANOVA is usually used with a categorical predictor or predictors, such as conditions in an experiment. In these circumstances, we compare the variance between the categories we care about to the variance within each category. Now, we can do this across one dimension, or even across multiple dimensions. For example, if we want to study how extroversion varies among men and women, as well as among book lovers and non-book lovers, we can study that across two dimensions, one for gender, and one for book-loving status. And, when we do a factorial ANOVA, that is, one with multiple dimensions, we can study my favorite thing in the world, interactions. To continue with our extroversion example, Maybe non-book-loving women are more extroverted than non-book-loving men, but book-loving people of both genders are equally extroverted. More broadly, an interaction describes a situation where differences along one dimension depend on differences along another dimension. Now, all the examples I've discussed to this point involve what is called between-participants data. In other words, each participant only has one data point. However, we can also have within-participants data where each participant contributes multiple data points to our matrix of categories. For example, if we want to see how individuals change over time, we can then do a within-participants ANOVA. When we do this, however, we actually have to adjust our error term to account for the fact that each individual's data will vary around a set mean. Thus, within-participants designs are more powerful since this correction makes our denominator smaller. And we can even combine the two in what is called a mixed design. These setups are extremely common in randomized controlled trials. For example, if we want to give some participants one treatment and give different participants a placebo, it is of interest to see how their outcomes vary over time. So on one axis, we have which condition the participants are in, and on another, pre versus post treatment. As such, we actually want an interaction here. Ideally, there are no differences between the groups pre-treatment and a significant difference after the treatment. And since the groups had no differences before the treatment, and do have a difference after the treatment, we can then infer that the treatment had an effect. ANOVA also pops up in broader regression models. In this case, we compare how much our predicted values differ from the mean to how much they differ from the actual values in our dataset. Thanks for watching, and if you have a stats and methods topic you'd like me to cover next, or more thoughts on this one, let me know in the comments.